We want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south as we bring you the latest teaching in Proverbs. Tonight we will be in Proverbs 30. We're coming to the last two Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs 30 is a very special Proverbs uh, because there's some nuggets in here to show the glory of the Lord. And there's some nuggets here that are very obvious to show that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes, we're talking about the proverb of the Old Testament. And we're going to show you something in the book of Revelation about locusts and the coming of the Christ. And um, there's also God's warning again, do not add to the words of this book. So this is very, uh, every, all scriptures God breathed for edification. But Proverbs 30 seems to be more enriched than normal of uh, gleanings for our uh, edification. As we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be the true teacher in the living Word of God, which is our Savior Christ the Lord. Now that we have the Holy Spirit, if you're just following us in our, um, our, our daily proverb, we go through the Proverbs at a rapid pace just to give you a gleaning. We'll stop a little bit uh, and, and, and hone in on um, a couple verses because it shows you the glory of the Lord. Every time we can see the Son of God in the Old Testament, that's something that we want to bring to people's attention. Because uh, many, many, many people deny that, that, that the Son of God is mentioned in uh, the Old Testament. Remember King David in Psalm 2, you can get our Psalm 2, uh, Psalm 2 teaching on our website, www.hisglory.tv. One of the most inc incredible, incredible uh, Psalms out there, where the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are talking in unison. Glory to be the Most High. The words of uh, Agur and the son of Yakik. Uh, is, is utterance. Uh, this is the man declares to Ithiel, Ithiel, and Ukul. So I'm mispronouncing these names. Uh, Yake, I got right because I checked on the, uh, on the pronunciation, pronunciation. I can't even say pronunciation right. So you can get that on the Blue Letter Bible. Not only does it give you the Hebrew meaning or the Greek meaning, you can click on the uh, auto, uh, audio and it will pronounce the name in Hebrew or Greek for you. Surely I am more stupid than any man. I, did, I do not have understanding of a man. We are all stupid and don't have understanding. The only understanding comes from the wisdom and the spirit of the Holy One. And we're going to see this in verse 3. I neither learned wisdom nor have knowledge of the Holy One. Who is the Holy One? He's the Anointed One, the Messiah, the King of Kings, Lord of Hosts, God in the Trinity. And he's going to talk about who is this person in verse 4. And the only true wisdom and knowledge comes from the Holy One, and the Holy One of ancient Israel, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the wisdom and knowledge only come from the Holy, from the Holy Spirit. So there's the Trinity right there. As we said in Psalm 2, you'll see the Trinity actually speaking back and forth to each other. And it closes out in the Holy Spirit saying, Kiss the Son, for salvation is through the Son. Even King David in Psalm 2 in the Old Testament is saying, Salvation is through the Son of God, thus says the Holy Spirit. Here we got the Trinity before us. Who has ascended into heaven or descended? What man has ascended into heaven and descended? No man has ascended and descended. Not yet, not to the harpazo of the, of the church and, and, and Christ bringing back his saints in the book of Revelation, but some have ascended into heaven, Enoch and Elijah, but only the Holy One who has ascended and descended. He is the one that controls all things. Who has gathered the winds in his fist? He can gather the, gather the winds in his fist. Only he can. Remember Solomon and Ecclesiastes? It's just grasping at the wind because it's vanity. But God controls the wind. He can capture the wind. He controls the wind. Who has to bound the waters in his garment? His garment stretching out the waters. Who has established the ends of the earth? He is the one that established the heavens and the earth. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the, the Alpha to the Tav, the A to the Z. He has everything perfectly planned and he has established the ends of the earth. Here we go. Hold on to your hat with this. We'll even explain it to you in the Hebrew. What is his name? Who is the Holy One? What is his name that's in charge of all this? What is his name? He is Elohim, the God, the one God, the Father. And here we go. What is his son's name? Wait a minute. God has a father or has a son? But well, before we get any further in that, let's make sure it's grammatically correct. Uh, the word son here is ben. Ben means son in Hebrew. So thus, thus far he's saying son. To keep it in context, go back up to verse 31. 30 verse 1 as we started this. The words of Agar, the son of Yek. 
the son. You, the word here is Ben. So he's saying he's a literal son, Agar, to his literal son, Eaik. As God the Father is talking about his literal son, Ben, uh, the son of God. The, his, what is his son name? He is the Messiah. He is the Christ. If you know, yes, we know if we have accepted Christ in our heart as Lord of our life. Every word of Theos is pure. His word is truth. Every word of his word is pure. In the beginning, John teaches us in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning, before the heavens and the earth, was the word. The word was with God next to the Father. And the word was God, meaning the Son is God. And the word became flesh. He is perfect in all his words. He is pure. He's the only pureness in this world of hate, in this world of fake lies and fake news and deception. He is the only thing pure, and that's why we have to stay in his world. word. And he is a shield to those who trust, who, that their trust in him. <coughs> Excuse me. As we see through all the Psalms, he is our shield. He is the one that we only put trust in. He is our shield, our battle shield. It's one of the elements of the spiritual warfare, of the shield, of the fiery darts of the enemy. He is our only shield, is God Almighty in his Son, Jesus Christ, and having the Holy Spirit, which gives us the wisdom and knowledge. Here we go again. For you denominations, listen up. This is why the denominations don't like to hear the Old Testament. Didn't God say all, my, all scriptures God breathed? 2 Timothy 3.16 all scriptures God breathed for edification and doctrine. All scripture, not just the New Testament, not just what verses that you take and throw against the wall and make your own doctrine of. All scriptures tells us two times in Revelation 19, do not add to or take away the words of this book, even in the New Testament. In Deuteronomy uh, 4.2, uh, do not add to, do not change my precepts and commandments. God's word is pure. Who are we to change the purity of God's word? This goes to all denominations. That's what God wants us to know. All 66 books by 40 authors, precept upon precept, line upon line. It is our, it, it, it is our truth. Do not add to his words. There is a promise. Do not add to his words. Lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. Ooh, what denominations change his words? Nine out of ten change his words. Look at their denomination. Look at their doctrine. Are they changing it? Is it replacement theology, saying the church has replaced Israel? Blasphemy, adding to and taking away the words of his book. That is a very important uh, verse here we should highlight in our Bible. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you found a liar. The only truth is his word. Don't mess with his word. He wrote it. He's only asking you to be obedient to it. Don't change it. Two things I request of you. Depri deprive me now before I die. Remove falsehood and lies from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. It's better not to have poverty or riches, not to be too poor or too rich, but to have the riches in Christ Jesus, where we want to be right in the middle, right in the middle, right in the sweet spot that is his glory, doing things for his purpose and his glory. And everything he blesses us with, we bless back to glorify his name. Feed me with food allotted to me. Give me the physical food that is allotted to me to get through the day, but give me your spiritual food every day of every second. Lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Jehovah? I become a fool if I don't have the spiritual wisdom, the spiritual manna every day. I will deny you and I will say, Who is Jehovah? I will be stray away. That's why God told the kings in, 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 in the book of Genesis before there was ever kings. You're supposed to read the Torah every single day. God wants us to read the word every single day. He didn't say every other day. He didn't say once a week. He didn't say once a month or once a year. He says every single day. It's our daily manna. Or lest we be we pour and steal. If we don't know the wisdom of the Lord, that's a, that's a sin. And profane the name of my Elohim. We'll profane the name because we'll drift away from the one God, the true God, Elohim, the God of three in Hebrew. Do not malign a servant to his master, lest he curse you and you be found guilty. There is a generation that curses his father and does not bless his mother. Isn't that the generation we're in right now? And didn't Paul tell us to Timothy that in the latter days that the youth would be lovers of self, they would be indignant, they will, they will, they will be blasphemies against their father, their mother. It would be hard to raise them. We're in that generation of it's me, 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 me. Instead of God, 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 God. And this is the generation. This is the church of Laodicea. This is the end days where Jesus is literally knocking at the door of the church of Laodicea and let, saying, let me in. There is a generation that curses his father and does not bless his mother. 
There is a generation that is pure in its own eyes. Isn't that the generation today? They're pure in their own eyes. It's all about vain, about about them. Yet it is not washed from its filthiness. Their sin has not been washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. We, um, it's been put upon us that we, uh, the Lord's going to bless us with some certain things. And we're going to do a local ministry for the youth because God put it on my heart that we, we, we got to touch the youth. We got to touch the youth all over the world. Because the, the, the youth are uh, being impacted by the world more so than any other. Satan is, is, is destroying the youth. The youth of, of the world today is the least, um, uh, le, le, uh, furthest away from the, the true God, Elohim, than anybody else because Satan has messed with their head. We know we're in the times of the end because Paul tells us in Timothy that they would be lovers of self. However, Joel gives us a counterbalance that in the end days there will be a prophecies. There will be our sons and daughters will have pro- they'll prophesy and sons and uh, signs and wonders will follow them. There's a remnant inside the youth that is going to explode as the days of Joel and as Peter talked about in the Acts. That is the last harvest. That's the last outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That's upon us. So what God, what what is going on in the world? of this uh, uh, denying the Most High God and getting away from God and into uh, the idolatry of the world, there's going to be a remnant that is going to rise up. And that's why here at His Glory, we're going to be focusing more and more and more and more on the youth. we got a building that we're going to set up locally for a youth program. And it's funny, I have a son that's in high school, and uh, I asked him about it. I said, so if we start a youth group uh, here uh, for His Glory Ministry, would you tell your friends to come? And, and, and uh, be a part of this to learn about God and play some games and, and you know, active and do, you know, teen type things. Well, it'll be age appropriate level. And my, my, my first thought was, well, he's going to go, nah. Well, he not only said, yeah, I would do it, but it sunk home after church yesterday. We had church. We did our family Bible study and get deep into the world. And he came back to me a couple of hours later and he goes, you know what? I've already got a couple of people that want to come. And this is the least likely child on the face of the earth that would invite people to this type of uh, atmosphere. Praise the Lord. He's going to do it in these end days. And it's going to be about his glory. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes. And their eyelids are lifted up. They're lofty. They think it's about me. No, it's about he, the Trinity. There is a generation whose teeth are like swords. That's the generation we're in right now. But God's going to change that remnant. And it's going to be a great outpouring. And whose fangs are like knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. The leech have two daughters, give and give. There are three things that are never satisfied. Four, never say enough. Never say enough. More, 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 more. Give, give, give. More, more, more. That's the world. I want more. And we're supposed to give up up the self for his purpose and his glory. So he says enough. The grave. So here's the fourth and saying never enough. The grave, the grave, once you go to the grave, it's too late. What are you going to do when you go to the grave? Your soul and spirit live on, but what are you going to do if you hit the grave, the second death, your flesh is dead. It's too late. There's no, there's no rebutes. There's no game over in Fortnite. It is over. And your spirit and soul will live based on that decision you made of your heart. The barren womb. God wants to protect the womb. And woe to the United States of America. Woe to China that are messing with the womb of God. And that will be a repercussion that comes. And God has a very special place for the womb. Remember, he's taken the barren womb of many in the the Bible and given them life because God is the God of life. The earth that is not satisfied with water. The earth, earth is never satisfied with water. We need more water. We need the living water for spiritual. And the fire never says enough. Satan never says enough. He wants more and more, more souls, more souls to the fire. The eye that mocks his father and scorns obedience to his mother. Doesn't that sound like the generation we're in right now? The ravens of the valley will pick it out. That's a sign of evil. And the young eagles will eat it. There are three things which are too wonderful for me. Yes, four, which I do not understand. Only understanding comes from the wisdom of the Lord. The way of an eagle in the air. It's one of the symbols of the... Well, of the four cherub, it's one of the single, uh, symbols of uh, the tribe of the three tribes of Israel. Eagle is the sign of, of, of the Gospels. There's four symbols of the Gospel. They all fit together. If you follow our Gospel series, you, you, we'll, we, we explain that. The eagle is a sign of the Father upside, sees all things, his hands everywhere. He's omnipresent. Eagles see their prey from a mile away. And the eagle is of, is of God. The way of the serpent on a rock. What is the way of Satan on the rock? And it will be crushed, as it says in Genesis 3.15. The, the, the seed of the woman will crush the head of the seed of the serpent. 
But the serpent has a seed, remember that. And the serpent is crafty, and he's the great chief liar beyond the, wor- beyond the lookout. That's why the word of God has to be true. It's got to be on your heart, because the evil one will try to fool you, if it were possible. The way of a ship in the midst of the sea, how the ship sails on the top of the sea. Sea is always an idiom to, 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 to the second death, ascent. Are we that ship going through the sea of life, of sin nature? Where is our ship going to anchor away? Is it going to anchor with the Lord? And the way of a man with a virgin, not in a sexual way, but a virgin throughout Scripture is expositional constancy means cleansed, purified. The five virgins who had their lamps lit versus the five virgins who didn't have their lamps lit. We become a virgin in Christ once he washes away our sin. That's what he's referring to. He's not talking about sexuality. He's talking about cleansed in the blood of the Lamb. The man is redeemed by the blood of the lamb and we become virgins and we want to have our five, our, our lamps lit, filled with the Holy Spirit, the olive oil, anxiously awaiting the return of the harpazo or the harpazo of, of, of Christ coming to get his church. This is the way of the adulterous woman. She eats and wipes her mouth. <laughs> Whatever she devours, eats and wipes her mouth. Oh, more please, mother! And says, I have done no wickedness, denies it. The spirit of Jezebel. See some of these wicked women out there just, just eating people alive and just pour more. I want more. And sees no wickedness in what they spew. For three things the earth is, is, is done. Yes, four it has, cannot bear up. For a servant when he reigns, a fool when he's filled with food. Whew. A hateful woman when she is married, a maidservant who succeeds her mistress. It doesn't go well in those cases. There are four things which are little, little on the earth, but they're exceedingly wise. Now, these are the wise things. The, the ants are a people not strong, but look what an ants do. They, they, they can carry, what, four, I think 40 times their body weight, and the ants never quit. We, God wants us to be ants, carry 40 times of our body weight, and never quit. Keep, never, always preparing, always walking hand in hand. Yet they prepare their food in the summer. They're always in preparation. The Lord wants us in preparation for his purpose and his glory. The rock badger, a feeble folk, yet they make their homes in the crags of the rocks. It's amazing how they make their homes. I was watching a raccoon and a family go up the tree. And how amazing it is. This mother raccoon took, went all the way up this tree and there's this big hole in the tree. And I would never known that the hole was in the tree unless I seen this raccoon, the big raccoon going up there at about sunset. And there's about five, five or six babies coming up and following her. And the mother stopped at the hole and grabbed them by the neck and put them in. And that's what mothers do. They bring them, they bring them in. But these are the things that we have to look for in nature, how everything God has pr- pr- uh, provided is so perfect. How do they know to do that? It's the instincts of God Almighty. Here's a part of, uh, that helps you uh, understand our teaching in the book of Revelation. Remember in the book of Revelation, there's 843 references to the Old Testament. If you don't know the Old Testament, there's no way you can figure out the book of Revelation. That's why God does that. He doesn't want this, the denominations that, that don't teach the, the, the book of Revelation because they say it's an allegory. Yes, there are symbols, but all the symbols are explained. You'll know what they are if you read the Old Testament. But if your de- denomination is telling you the church has replaced Israel and you don't need to read the Old Testament, run, run very fast. Remember, that is a denomination. We are a church. The church is us. It says the locusts have no king. The locusts have no king. So you study the locusts in the book of Revelation. We know that that is not a physical locust because the locusts have no king. These are demonic locusts coming out. Matter of fact, in the Septuagint, it says uh, Gog is the uh, king of the locusts. How fascinating that. Gog is not a person. Uh, Gog is a spirit of demonic. And you see that in the book of Revelation too. It's the spirit of the locusts that are demons that Gog is uh, ra- uh, sending out. Yet they all advance in ranks. The locusts have no king, but they know exactly how to go. And that's the, 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 how they've interpreted. And uh, my, if my wife is listening, you should cover your ears right now. We're not going to give you any pictures. The spider. Uh, did I say the spider? The spider skillfully grafts with its hands. She doesn't like spiders. Grass, and now my youngest son doesn't like spiders either. Dad, can you kill a spider? I mean, it's just a small spider. Come on. They, fr- they freak over spiders. The spider skillfully grasps with its hands and its king's palaces. So even the king's palace will have spiders. No matter what, spiders will come. Even Orkin can't stop spiders. There are three things which are majestic and in pace. Yes, four, which are stately and walk. A lion. Ooh, yeah. The lion of the tribe of Judah, which is mightiest among the beasts. And that is also another symbol of one of the cherub, and that's also another symbol 
of uh, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, which is, uh, represents uh, one of the sides of the children of Israel of the three tribes, and that's the emblem of that. And the emblem of the lion is also the emblem of the city of Jerusalem, where our King of Kings, Lord of Hosts, the lion of the tribe of Judah, will sit and bring in the, the Davidic covenant. He's a mighty, mighty among the beasts and does not turn away from any. <laughs> the lions don't turn away from any except its, its, its wife. I saw this pretty cool uh, thing. I don't know what, uh, how it popped up. There was this video, and uh, I guess it's supposed to be funny. It was kind of funny. Uh, this 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 uh, male lion was just resting and just kind of on guard, looking all around. And you see the I'm assuming it's his wife because they sneak up on you sometimes. The the the, the woman, uh, the lady lion, the lioness, was coming up, sneaking and prowling behind. And the lion's looking around like this, looking for the enemy. And has no idea she's coming. And she sneak, comes up behind her, and she's just being playful. And came up and grabs him, and he jumps around in, in midair and goes, goes after her and realizes his lion, and they do a lion laugh and a lion dance. So the lion is the greatest of them all. That is our lion of the tribe of Judah. A greyhound, a male goat, also a king whose troops are with him. The troops, that the king, that the troops love him, will fight for him like King David's troops. And like, our, like the king of kings, lord of hosts, that king will have troops or saints called by his name that will do anything for our king. Praise his name. Verse 32, if you've been foolish in exalting yourself, or if you have devilish evil, uh, uh, devised evil, put your hand on your mouth. Close your mouth if you've changed the words of God. And being foolish in exalting yourself instead of the glory of God. The glory goes to no one other than the glory of God. He is the great I am that I am. Closes out in verse 33, kind of fascinating. Again, people will say, well, God, you know, in the old, uh, the, the old um, scripture, they were, they, were in, uh, they were in scribes. They were not in verse and chapter. Proverbs 30 is the, uh, 30 is the number of uh, a priest when a priest could take uh, the priestly duties. It's also the number of Jesus uh, when he took on his ministry. Uh, talking about the Son of God was verse 30. And we close in verse 33, which is the end of Christ's, uh, Christ's ministry when he went up to be at the right hand of the Father and the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Um, Given God, uh, God puts things in the places. He knew our man was going to put Bible Bible verses, and there's why, that's why there's no coincidence when there's only thirty when there's exactly thirty one uh, proverbs in uh, Proverbs. Thirty one in Hebrew is the number of the unpronounceable four letter word of God, Elohim or Yahweh. That's the number thirty one. So much so, I think I've said this in another study. It was Martin Luther who got a lot of doctrine wrong, a lot of doctrine wrong. He was anti-Jews, too. Uh, Martin Luther tried to get the book of Esther thrown out of the canon of the book, uh, out, of the, his, out of his glory, out of uh, the Bible, because he said there's no reference to Jehovah God in there. So with Rabbi Code, we've talked about Rabbi Codes before. Rabbi Codes in the original scripture is every seventh letter you drop, every seventh letter you drop the letter, and it, it, it spells a message. And in the rabbi codes in the book of Esther, in the original, uh, in the original scroll, uh, there, the word Yehovah is there 31 times. God anticipated some knucklehead in the 1500s that would say, we need to get the book of Esther out because God is not mentioned. He was mentioned in code the name Yehovah 31 times. That's how powerful God is. Everything he has is for a meeting and a purpose. There's no coincidence when it comes to life and when, with, with your hand on God. As the rabbis say, coincidence is not a kosher word. For as churning of a milk produces butter, and wringing of those product uh, produces, uh, uh, wringing the nose produces blood. Yeah, have you ever taken one in the nose? You, it produces blood. So the forcing of wrath produces strife. The forcing of the wrath produces strife. We don't want strife. The only strife is going to be when we give our life to the Lord. The strife will come from the evil one. But remember earlier he said he's our shield? That's why we put the five elements of defense up and the two offensive weapons, which is our what? The sword, the word of God. That's why you got to know the word of God. And praying in the spirit, the artillery fire, praying in the spirit, the carpet bombing of the enemy. We have to have all seven elements. That's why you see nine out of ten, well, actually nine and a half out of ten churches. And I got it right here, the armor of God. You'll see this all over the place. You can get these at bookstores. And they're, they're, every one of them tells you there's, there's six elements of warfare. God doesn't work in sixes. Six is the number of man. God would never work in sixes. They've missed the very next sentence 
and Ephesians, which talks about praying in the spirit, the carpet bombing of the enemy. Therefore, there are seven. God is the God of completion. That's why in the book of Revelation, the revelation of the Messiah, the Son of God, in Proverbs 30, uh, 30 verse 30, uh, in, in, in the Son of God, there is over a hundred sevens because it's the completion of the earth age. It's completion of man. That's where we enter into the seventh day in this, the millennial reign of our King of Kings and Lord of Hosts. We pray that Proverbs 30 is a blessing to you. There were some pretty good nuggets in here. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you till next time. God bless you.